Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be tearing down and comparing the internals of the iPhone first generation to the 13 Pro, Apple's first and current smartphone. What's changed in 14 years? From the outside, the differences are quite substantial. Firstly, the size of just about everything has gotten bigger. From the size of the phone itself and the cameras, to the display which has grown from 9cm on the first generation to 15cm on the 13 and 17cm on the 13 Pro Max. But before we get started, I'd like to thank iFixit for sponsoring this video. Through to the end of December, you can get major deals on parts and toolkits at ifixit.com slash hughjefferies or at the link in the description. The first iPhone is the only Apple phone not to have any visible screws on the outside. Instead, the two back pieces must be pried off. This design makes it the hardest iPhone to open. Starting with the black antenna cover, I can use a jimmy tool and pick to work it loose. It's held in place with a few plastic clips, which are easily broken. After the easiest of the two pieces is out of the way, it's time for the real challenge. After three screws are removed, the back needs to be unlatched at the sides and worked loose. The construction of this part reminds me of opening a 6th or 7th generation iPod. Given the soft nature of the aluminium, it's likely that the case will deform slightly, although you can always attempt to bend it back. With the panel free from the mid-frame, it's still attached by one flex cable that connects to the buttons and headphone jack. Once unplugged, the rear panel can come off. Switching to the 13, it can be opened next. Rather than opening from the back, it opens display first. Secured using glue, clips, and screws, both phones proved challenging to open. After thoroughly heating the display, the two Apple Pentalobe security screws can be removed and the display be pried free using a suction cup and a few plastic picks. At a first glance, the internal layout looks significantly more polished than the first generation, but we'll have to take a closer look at comparing the two once the display is free from the 13. Its connectors are housed under two brackets secured in place with tri-wing security screws. Thankfully, my iFixit toolkit has all of the bits I needed to defeat the iPhone 13's array of security screws. With both internals revealed, it's time to see what's changed. The internal layout differs with the first generation iPhone housing its logic board at the top rather than on the side. Design wise, the first generation is built function over form. Less consideration appears to have been taken to make it look visually appealing on the inside. In contrast, the 13 looks uniform with its black and silver color scheme. Marketing jargon is also printed on some components, highlighting the name of the processor and vibration motor. But we're not stopping here. Next, I'll remove both logic boards. Starting with the first iPhone, its board is fastened with three Phillips screws. Several flex cables for the camera, display, and dock connector will need to be unplugged before it can come out. The biggest disappointment with this device was Apple's choice to solder the battery in place, which made it more difficult to replace the battery. Thankfully, this design never made it into another iPhone model. This board is powered by a Samsung processor running at 412 megahertz with 128 megs of RAM and either four, eight or 16 gigs of storage. Turning our attention back to the 13 Pro, we can remove its logic board, which is secured with two standoff screws and a total of 12 flex cables. The 13 Pro is powered by the Apple A15 processor, 6 gigabytes of RAM and packs 128, 256, 512 or 1024 gigabytes of storage. The Pro model of the 13 also features three cameras, a telephoto, ultra wide and wide camera. Compared against the 2 megapixel camera from the first generation, you can see the major size difference in the sensor. It should also be noted the first generation isn't capable of recording video, just still images. All three of the 13 Pro cameras have image stabilization, unlike the first gen model. While the battery easily came unadhered on the original iPhone, for the 13, it's a bit more complex. There are three strips that in theory, when pulled on, remove the adhesive below the battery. 
To get to the lower tabs, the vibration motor and speaker need to be removed. Using some tweezers, I can begin pulling out each tab. The lower left one began pulling, but shortly snapped off. The right tab proceeded to remove as intended. With no way of accessing the top adhesive tab, I'm forced to pry up the battery. Using some alcohol will loosen the adhesive under the broken tab. As I learnt, the alcohol will smudge the text printed on the battery if it comes in contact with it. Prying out the 3096 mAh battery, we can take a look at that battery tab that snapped. As you can see, it broke under the battery right where it turns. Whilst not a flawless removal with the iPhone 13, it's still easier than the first generation model. To remove its battery, there is some gunk over the top of the connections, which is to prevent them from shorting out against the back casing. After that gunk has been removed, we can desolder the three wires. This will allow me to attach a new battery, which will hopefully bring this iPhone first generation back into life. Its battery holds 1400 milliamp hours of charge compared to the 3095 of the iPhone 13 battery. Some other advances in the iPhone 13 include a LiDAR scanner to improve camera autofocus in low light and allow better augmented reality. Additionally, the 13 includes a front facing camera with face detection, which can be used to unlock the phone or pay using your face. Focusing on the original iPhone, I'm going to remove its display, which is one of the last components to come out. The outer stainless steel bezel will need to be unfastened to gain access to the display's six clips holding it in place. The display connects to the logic board using two flex cables, one of which is adhered to the back of the mid-frame and underneath a piece of tape. After freeing it, we can work on removing the display panel. Using a jimmy tool, I'll wedge it in between the clips to unlatch them. Additionally, I'll also work the pick around the top and bottom edges as it is lightly adhered to the mid-frame. The adhesive used is quite weak, so it isn't necessary to use any form of heat. After successfully freeing the display, its cables can be weaved through the mid-frame so the screen can be fully detached. Before attaching the new display, the remaining glass shards will need to be removed so the new screen will sit flush. Depending on your display, you may also need to transfer over the mesh grill for the earpiece. After doing this, the new display can be fitted onto the frame. It can be a little bit tricky to get the cable fully seated in the correct position, but once that's done, it can simply be clipped back into place. Before attaching the bezel, I'll clean it up with a microfiber cloth and scrape away any of the residual grime that's gotten caught up between it and the back casing. After which, I can attach the bezel back onto the mid-frame and secure it with its several Phillips head screws. The method to which the display is fitted to the phone is very similar to an iPhone 4 and 4S. It may be more involved than the newest iPhone, but a replacement display will have no software complications as the phone is not programmed to reject third-party installed parts. Before reinstalling the logic board, I'll need to install our new battery. This one is only rated at 1,100 milliamp hours, which is about 300 less than the original. So it is a slight downgrade, but the old battery was completely worn out and wouldn't charge. And as a result, the phone wouldn't power on. So in my eyes, this is certainly an improvement. After soldering on the three wires for the battery, the logic board can be reinstalled into the phone. After the flex cables are attached, the three Phillips head screws can be installed before attaching the two antenna wires. After seating the battery back into position, we can reinstall the rear camera. The last thing left to do is reattach the back panel. Simply clipping the original aluminium casing back into place, its three screws and one antenna wire can be reattached before the bottom cover. With it reassembled, we can remove the protective film from the new display.
With one phone reassembled, it's time for the other. It's fair to say, while newer iPhones have more features, as a result, there's a lot more components, cables, and screws when compared to older phones. Still, the device remains very modular, although with software locks, the majority of components can't be replaced by third-party repairers, without features needlessly being disabled. This may change with Apple's proposed repair program in 2022, but only time will tell. The biggest repair obstacle with this phone is the glass back. Not only does it break easily, but it's very complicated to replace, requiring complete disassembly of every component down to the mesh grills in the speaker ports or removal through an expensive laser machine. After connecting the display, the battery can be plugged back into position and the two brackets can be reattached. Lastly, I can wipe down any dust and fingerprints inside the device using a microfiber cloth and seal the display back against the frame of the phone. After reinstalling the two pentalobe screws, we're done. So this is it, two iPhones 14 years apart. While a lot has changed on the inside and outside, there are still many similarities between the two, including their USB 2.0 cable connections and the overall feel of the operating system. After our repairs to our first generation iPhone, you can see it's functioning just as it should. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the teardown and repair assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.